Now for the next section of this training activity, we're going to begin by creating some requirements. More specifically, we're going to create some functional requirements. So therefore, let's start off by opening the product requirement structure by coming over here to the tile that we just organized to the product requirements and I'll open that structure simply by clicking mouse button one or the first mouse button. So once the structure is loaded, we are going to drill down until we get to the feature requirements under core development. So drill down the core development structure, down the feature requirement structure, down to the feature of adaptive cruise control. Now you can see already that we have some initial text that you see around the requirement. What we're going to do is we're going to add some functional requirements under this adaptive cruise control. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this view a little bit. So if you come up here to this icon where it says list with summary, we're going to click on that and we're going to change it to table with summary. Now what that's done is it's given us a table view uh, for the requirements. In addition, we're going to change it to a hierarchical mode to nested mode. And what, this, uh, what you'll see now is a more of a structure type view of the requirements. So standing on the adaptive cruise control, we're going to create our first requirement by clicking the add element button. The add element button, when you add as a child, you will be prompt with this dialog. And you will notice, based on that TC allow rule that we changed earlier in the rich client, now no longer says the feature requirements. By default, all the requirements will be created as functional requirements. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a name. And that name will be set speed. Hit the create and add button to create the requirement. Now the requirement is a child of the feature requirement for the adaptive cruise control, set speed. Go ahead and select the set speed requirement. We're going to add some text information to our requirement. In this example, click on the viewer tab and then click the summary tab for start edit. So in this dialog here you get what's referred to as the rich text editor which was uh, um, used for the CK editor. CK editor is our rich text editor for requirements for HTML type requirements and at this point you can go through the document. The document describes the requirement text body that we want in each requirement. In this case I've already copied that clear body text and I'm going to paste it into this uh, requirement. The one thing in the document is said to, to delete the set speed um, uh, for the requirement so that you only have just the clear text that you want. We don't need to see set speed twice in the clear body text and in the requirement name. So therefore at this point I have my text body information for the requirement. I will go ahead and click Save. And now you notice for set speed, there's the requirement for that object, requirement text for that object. At this point, we will continue to, to create the requirements for the remainder and do this for the same for the rest all the way until the last requirement where we're going to create a table. So at this point, I'm going to pause the video, go ahead and create the rest of the requirements exactly the same way as I did this one. And when I get to the last requirement where I'm going to add a table, I will start recording again to walk you through the steps for creating a table in, in, stock, in our requirement doc. One more note that I want to make as you're creating your requirements. As you notice right now, I am on the set speed requirement object. If I go click add a new element, 
I want to make sure that at this level for set speed that I'm adding a sibling, not a child. If I add a child, it will create a requirement under the set speed, and that's not what we want for this section. So I'm going to create another requirement that is a sibling. And basically, a sibling is a you know, brother or sister to the parent. And I'm going to do the same thing as before, give it a requirement name, and then fill in the information for the requirement and hit save again. And you can see I have two requirements now under the adaptive cruise control and I will do this for the remainder as I create a sibling for each one. All the way up to the end when I create the last requirement uh, using a table. As I mentioned earlier, the next requirement we're going to make will contain a table and we'll walk through the process of creating that table uh, when we create the requirement for the obstacle detection. So once again I'm going to create a sibling requirement just like I did before. This sibling requirement is going to be called obstacle detection. So I'm going to create the requirement just like I have done before but in this example here, we're going to click on the, the summary tab. We're going to paste our text information about the requirement for the clear body text. Then we're going to create a table for each one of the sections around the obstacle de detection. And as you notice here, it says C table below for the minimum distance for complete stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the table. So you come up here to the table icon. You're going to create it. And in this case, we want six rows. And we want five columns. Go ahead and say OK. Now we'll talk about what the table will do when it's the width of 500 and it'll auto size and so forth. When you create this, you do get this table view. However, when you start typing in information, you notice that your size of your columns starts changing. That's okay. You can still type in it and it will be fixed at the end. So as I'm typing in, you will notice that the columns start changing in size. And as I do this for the remainder, they will all update on their size based on the text you put in. Now at this point, you'll notice that once it gets to the smallest size, it doesn't get any smaller. It maintains the size so you can still click in the column or in the box to add textual information to that column. So as you see here, I'll click inside. That last one is relatively small, but it still allows me to type in it. And now once I have everything typed, they all look like they're around the same size. Now if you want to center these, you can come up here and you can click to center just like you do in Microsoft Word or any text editor. Other things you can do is you can bold the text just like you do in uh, Microsoft Office. Now you can see I have a table to work with. So the first one we're going to put in is for large animal size. And as you can see, I'm filling in the information just like I would if it was a Microsoft Office product. 
So I'm going to fill in the rest of the information and then I'm going to unpause the video at the end to show you what the table will look like once it's finished. If you are using Chrome, in this case I'm using Firefox, if you are using Chrome, Chrome does support if you cut and paste from Excel or a table inside Microsoft Word and paste it into the CK editor, you will get the table in for the table and all the information in the columns and rows in the table. But Firefox and Internet Explorer do not support this. At this point you should have all your textual information in your table. Now a fast way to center all these is much like you do in Excel you can select everything and then hit center and all your information is centered in the in the table. Once that is completed I will click Save and now you see your table as part of your requirement for the obstacle detection. For the remainder of the requirements we are just going to create placeholder objects just so we can have some requirements to link to when we go through the linking process of creating a requirements link to our functions. So for the remainder Go ahead and continue on and create the rest of the requirement objects, but there will be no uh, clear text body in there. Now at this point, all your requirement objects should be created. So here you have your adaptive cruise control and you have all your functional requirements that have been created and ready to be um, allocated to your function objects in the next chapter section. So at this point you should be on page 30 and we're ready to continue on for section 6.3 to create the context and relationships between requirements.